Located in southern New Mexico, White Sands National Park offers visitors a chance to explore a vast and otherworldly landscape. Home to the largest gypsum dune field in the world, covering 275 square miles of Chihuahuan desert terrain. All this sand makes for great sledding, so after we cover the science of how it all got here, we're going to tell you how to sled it at the end of today's video. White Sands National Park formed as a national monument in 1933, became a national park in 2019. An amazing place. We're gonna fill up our water bottles, grab some salty snacks, try to adapt to these harsh desert climates and go explore the park. Did you say salty snack? Let's go. How did the sand exactly get white and be here? Well, the sand is white because it's gypsum and it got here, do you know where it came from? It came wow. from those mountains back there. What? So yeah, about 275 million years ago in the Permian era, there was a sea here and that sea would rise and fall and it deposited gypsum and that gypsum got left behind in what eventually became those mountains. While the gypsum you find here formed millions of years ago, the sand dunes are a more recent addition to the landscape. These famous dunes likely began forming about 7,000 to 10,000 years ago after the end of the last ice age. Here's how. During the last ice age, the mountains surrounding what is now the park were covered with a large glacier. These mountains hold the gypsum that was left behind when the Permian Sea evaporated. So when that ice age glacier eventually melted, the ice melt flowed down the mountain dissolving the ancient gypsum and carrying it along with the water as it flowed into a lake in the Tularosa Basin. This basin is where the park sits today. It acts like a bathtub without a drain, holding the water that flows into it. The Ice Age Lake dried up and disappeared about 10,000 years ago, leaving behind the gypsum first in its crystallized form, called selenite. And those selenite crystals are very fragile. They break apart easily, and so when the wind and rain uh, come back when the rain comes back and the wind comes through those crystals break down and eventually the wind can pick up those crystals and roll them along and Roll them until they become these tiny grains of sand that we see here and that Kai seems to like playing with I like it. It's fun Well soon we're gonna be sledding down these things Stay tuned for that Surprisingly, for a desert climate, there's actually a lot of water in this park. You just can't see it. In fact, water is gypsum's sand secret ingredient. You cannot have sand dunes like these without it. These dunes are at nearly 100% humidity year-round, and groundwater is only a few feet under the dunes. This water acts like a glue, keeping the gypsum sand dunes from blowing away entirely in this very windy place. The cool thing about this park is that it's going to change pretty dramatically probably every time you visit. And the reason it changes is the wind. The dunes move something like 12 to 15 feet every year. And all of that is because the wind is constantly shifting and moving and redepositing sand all throughout the park. You ready, Dad? Ready. All right. Now we go. But go. gypsum sand also makes a great material summer sledding. First, choose the right sled and wax it up. Sand isn't slippery like snow. Saucer style sleds work best and you can buy sled wax in the park office. So me and mom are doing a sledding and mom is waxing up our sled. You need to put wax on it so it goes fast. Second, choose a good hill. Check with the park rangers to confirm where you can sled and to get tips on the best spots. Don't sled on the first hill you find. If you want to go fast, walk to the next hill back and find one without any footsteps or tracks. You want hard packed sand for your sledding. So have a dedicated up and down path once you find your perfect hill to keep your sand set for speed. If you can, sled after a rainstorm to get the fastest, cleanest tracks, but watch out for vegetation and roads. Third, use physics. Get a push and shift your weight to go faster. Newton's first law is that an object at rest tends to stay at rest. In order to overcome the friction between the sled and the ground, you need a push in the right place where gravity can give you an assist. Too far back on the hill and you won't be able to get started as easily. Lean back to go faster, forward to go slower. A fact I apparently forgot in the desert heat when I got a little stuck. Finally, be careful where the dune meets the desert floor. Dune sand is soft. 
but the area at the base of the dune can be very hard and it hurts. We were sledding, but then it got pretty windy, so we had to stop. It was amazing at what Sam's here, because it was awesome, and all the amazing prehistoric stuff that happened here. 